Number 33. How are the following similar and how do they differ? And then we have letter C. So in this case, we have to talk about the similarities and differences between bonding orbitals and antibonding orbitals. Okay, well, the similarity, the similarity or the similarities, because there are a couple of them, is that they are both molecular orbitals. So whether you're talking about a bonding orbital or an antibonding orbital, they're both classified as molecular orbitals. And molecular orbitals are talking about electrons that are coming from two atomic orbitals. So um, the easiest way to do this is if we talk about either a, an s orbital or a p orbital. In this case, I'm going to do it in terms of the, the p orbitals, right? And the easiest p orbital to draw is the px. So in this case, I'm going to have one px, and remember your p's are, are your dumbbells, right? And in this case, I'm just drawing them uh, in the x fashion, as if this was a graph, right? This is the x-axis. So here's one px atomic orbital coming in with another px orbital. But technically, since we're talking about molecular orbitals, we're talking about probability. So we want to kind of exhaust all the options, right? Now I can basically take this px orbital, and if I can, can I copy and paste this? No. Um, so I'll just, I'll just draw it again. So maybe we'll do this a little bit on top, move this up, and we'll do another green little dumbbell that was terrible. That's not bad, but not good either. And then we'll do the same one on this side. Okay. So you have basically two options, right? If I had another px orbital coming in, right, I could have two different representations. I could have it in which the blues are facing each other, right, blue on blue, and the green is on the outside. Or I could have the green next to the blue and the blue on the outside. So maybe I will just draw this a little bit higher and maybe I'll draw this one clo close together. And now I have two px atomic orbitals coming together. Now remember, when you're trying to have them come together, you want to have the same coloring coming together. That's going to produce the bonding orbital. So this one, since the two blues are coming together, you're going to form a bonding orbital because they have the same color. So when these come together, you'll have your two nuclei and you will have the blue now being way bigger because the probability of finding the electrons in here is way higher than in the two that are not going to be bonding the other ones, right? So this is what the bonding orbital will look like. But if you have two different colors coming together, this is called out of phase, as opposed to this, this is in phase, you will not be able to form a bond. This is the antibonding orbitals. So when we draw this, we will have our two nuclei, but you will have a node because two different colors do not go together. So what's going to happen is the probability of finding an electron close to the node is very unlikely. So this green will get smaller and the blue will get smaller as well. Maybe I'll just pull this in a little bit closer just to show you. And then the other colors on the other side will be the larger type. But as you can see, between the nuclei, you don't make a bond. You make a node instead. And that's antibonding. Antibonding is known as a star. So technically, this would be a sigma p, and we'll say px. And this will be a sigma px with a star on it. Anytime that you have a star, that means antibonding, and you will be forming a node. So another similarity, because then we can get to the differences, another similarity is you're still talking about one electron whoop, from one 
px with another electron from another one. And maybe I'll just draw that here, right? So still at the end of the day, you're still having your two electrons. And same thing here, right? If I have maybe one electron here and one electron here, you know, you're still talking about two electrons. So that's another similarity is that they're both molecular orbitals and they can both have a max of two electrons per orbital, whether you're talking about a bonding orbital and antibonding. But now the difference is since we drew everything out, it's beautiful to just see it, right? A difference is that for your bonding, this is bonding that's in phase. And when you do in phase bonding, you will not have a node. So there will be no node. But for your antibonding, this is called out of phase. And whenever you don't have your colors lined up, that's out of phase, and you will form a node. So that's one of the differences, right? And I think that answers the question. So here are your similarities. They're both molecular orbitals, and they're talking about two electrons. But the differences lie in whether they're in phase or they're out of phase, whether you form a node or not. And that's it. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. And if you want to help us out, please hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. Thank you so much. Um, you guys have really been super nice and, uh, you know, just, just telling my brother and I in the comments how much this channel values, uh, that you value the channel and how much it's helped you in your classes. We also have physics and math videos at the moment with more subjects in the future. So just check the channel out. I'll be talking to you soon. Bye-bye.